Hi, I'm Frats, and uh, welcome to this video where I'm going to be covering Crying Suns and helping you to get started, just covering the basic mechanics and how the game works. Okay, so Crying Suns is essentially a kind of a mix between an old school text adventure game uh, with a bit of kind of sort of semi real time strategy. And uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going through a fir the first few sort of solar systems so I can show you the game mechanics, show you how all, all the elements work. Um, first up, the first thing I need to say though is you need to be aware that you can't have user-based saves. In other words, the game saves for you and it decides when it saves. And it saves at the end of each chapter, which is essentially three sectors. So because of this, I actually recommend uh, up here on the top right hand corner that you start on the easy setting uh, and do the first three sectors, get used to the game, and then you can restart with standard. Otherwise, you're going to get a little bit overwhelmed and you're going to get very frustrated because you almost get to like the end of the third sector and then you get thrown back to the beginning again. So um, yeah, start with easy, just get used to the game and then you can always just do a restart once you feel comfortable with everything. Right, so let's crack on. So here we are on the, uh, the opening page uh, for setting up your battleship. Now you only get one battleship to start with, which is the Excelsior. And what we're going to do is we're going to cover all of these upgrade levels a little bit later on. Um, up the top here, we have our neon fuel, we have our scrap, and we have our commandos. And then over here on the side, we have auxiliary systems. Essentially, your fuel is going to be your most important uh, resource to gather. That's what allows you to jump between star systems and also to jump within a solar system. Scrap is your currency. Commandos, they're going to be using something called expeditions, which we're going to cover in a minute. And then auxiliary systems are essentially bonuses to your battleship. And then down here you have your squadrons, okay, which are your fighters, your drones, etc., which you're going to launch from your battleship. Your weapons, which are based on your battleship. And you have two different types of weapons, three different types actually. You have some that only affect squadrons, some that only affect other battleships, and some that do both. And then finally down the bottom here we have choose your officers, which is how we now proceed to the next step. So we're going to choose our officers, and these officers are essentially, they serve two purposes. Uh, the first purpose is to provide bonuses to your ship, uh, either to your hull, to your squadrons, or to your onboard weapons. And also uh, their skill sets down the bottom here, you see skills, that relates to when you do the expeditions. In other words, when you send uh, a officer and your commandos down to the planet, the skills will depend on will decide how successful they are. Now you can see down the bottom here, I've got like the Special Officer DNA database. These get unlocked as you play the game, and then as you start the game again, you basically have one normally as an option, uh, and it picks it at random. So you can see I've got Saul Bayardo here. Uh, so I'm gonna not use this guy because it's obviously not relevant normally when you're starting from scratch. Now, which officers do you choose? Well, you have to make two decisions. The first, is the abilities which are going to affect the, the uh, battleships or the squadrons. So if you've got one, for example, that does hull repair, you want that. That's kind of really, really useful. Anything that provides health, either to your squadrons or to your hull, they kind of take precedence over everything else. So, um, so obviously Saul is my, um, my bonus one though, so we're going to stay away from him. So uh, we're going to go for uh, battleship seal shielding, and you can see he's a soldier. Now, because I've picked a soldier, we really want to pick uh, something else uh, that's not a soldier, uh, simply because uh, when you do your expeditions, you don't want to have two soldiers, otherwise you only have one set of skill sets, really. So what you want to go with is go with something like a spy or a scientist. So here I don't have a scientist that hasn't given me that option, so I'm going to go for the spy. And I get a squadron boost of 25%. And you can see that applies to my squadrons right there. So I'm going to pick these two and we are going to start. <coughs> okay, just loading up now. Okay, first sector. Right, so we have our star map. <coughs> Excuse me. So what we have to do is we have to get from the entrance over here and we have to make our way all the way over to the exit. Now, ideally, in most games, you'd like to do a really roundabout route because then that way you can use as much resources and gather as, have as many fights as possible to get to, until you get to the boss. But in this game, you don't have that option because you have on the, on the side here this incoming alert. What this means is as you move forward uh, through the star map, 
uh, you're going to get enemy battleships coming in after you, and they will overpower you. Uh, what it means in, in reality is that you can make one detour from the straight line. So, for example, if I now went up to, to here along the top, I could bounce back one and then go down here, but I couldn't go any further back. Okay, so just to be aware of that. And then if we now look at these star systems, we have uh, at the top here, Acellus. You can see we've got a little number three at the top, and that kind of stands for the anomalies. That means generally means a fight or something that's going to give you a, a good or a negative reward. And there's nothing else. There's just planets. So these planets with these anomalies. So that's basically not giving us very much. The same with this one. We've just got planets, some with anomalies. Ah, now down here, you see we have different ones. So we've got one which has got battleship wreckage, and another one we've got shipyard. The battleship wreckage, uh, any of those, um, that little icon that's kind of like the, the four kind of little arrows pointing in, uh, that refers to an expedition. And you want to do as many of those as possible, as that allows you to get the resources that you need to get more scraps, so you can buy more parts of your ship, etc. Now, the shipyard is one of the, the three areas that where you can refill or restock your battleship. And you have army depots, you have shipyards, and then you have mercenary outposts. So the army depots, uh, they allow you to buy, buy new squadrons, new, new weapons. Uh, the shipyard allows you to buy auxiliary systems for your ship and also to repair. So, for example, you will repair squadrons, repair your battleship. And then finally, the mercenary outpost allows you to get more officers. So you can see at the bottom of the screen here, I've got onto the right, just by the closed map, I have two officers and you can go up to five officers. Uh, so you can buy more. Okay, and then so we look down this one here and then once again here, we've just got anomalies. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go for the one with the battleship wreckage. And the reason why we wanna go there is like I said, the planets give you the most resources. Okay, so we're gonna click on that. There we go, off we go. Okay, any story elements of it, uh, I'm going to skip past uh, because I don't want to sort of uh, spoil the game for you. All right, so we're going to just uh, zoom past this bit. There we go. I'll let you make that decision when the time comes. All right, let's just zoom past. Okay, so we're now arrived in the first star system. Now, every time you arrive in a star system, you get one of these cubes. And one of these cubes allows you to scavenge neon. And the Neon, or Neo-N, um, is what allows you to keep jumping around. Now, you really don't want to run out of this. If you run out, you have to wait a turn before you can move again, which means that those enemies that are coming in from the left of the map, they're going to catch up with you. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Upgrades, and you've got 45 scrap. Spend it straight away on fuel scavenging efficiency. You want this at top level. Without fuel, you can't jump around. If you can't jump around, you can't go to expeditions, you can't do extra missions, and you will run out of resources. So straight away, we're just gonna take that. And now I can scavenge the Neo. And you can see I got two instead of one because obviously I've used that fuel scavenging bonus. Uh, it's given me some extra fuel, so that's brilliant. Okay, so we have our star map here, which is the star map that we were looking at earlier. And you can see there we are, we're in Horus. I'm going to close that map, and then we have the local system map. Okay, so we're now we can actually travel within the local system. And we have six fuels, so we've got plenty. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go straight over to this battleship wreckage. So we're going to fly over there. Okay. I'm going to zoom past this bit. Oh, there you go, I've got some free scrap. Okay, and now what we have is we have our expedition. And the way we do an expedition is pretty straightforward. Uh, there's actually very little to do on our part. We scan the planet, and then it's gonna come back and give us an overview of what we can achieve. So we have two officers. So we have our first officer, which is Cheng, and we have our second officer, which is Arena. Now you really don't wanna lose your officers if you can. So ideally you want your officer's survival to be the green tick. All right, and if necessary, it could take some damage, but the green tick is preferable. Uh, and then the, if, you, if you've got a red one, just don't do it. Okay, then the resource extraction. So you're only gonna get between zero and 24% of resources here. And here we're gonna, gonna get 24 to 63, but we're gonna lose most of our commandos. All right, and this one, we're gonna lose six commandos. 
Now, commandos, are, you can get them at any fuel and commandos you can get at any of the shipyards, army depots, and mercenary outposts. So they are kind of disposable. I hate to say it. Sorry, commandos. So don't worry about losing commandos. You can always replace them quite easily. Uh, it's more important that you get the resources. So I'm going to go for this one just because it's going to give me more resources and my officer will get injured. But uh, hopefully I'll get a chance to uh, heal my officer before I have to use that officer again. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to select that officer and then we're going to launch the expedition. Now what happens at this stage is that you, you get a chance to retreat. To be honest, you know, you're committing to it. You know in advance what the dangers are. I don't see the point of actually ever retreating from a mission. Uh, you might as well just go through with it. And actually, it's one of the skills you can upgrade, and it's probably the, the last one you would ever upgrade at any time. So there we go. So here's our chance to uh, to retreat. So we're just going to continue. And essentially, based on the skill sets, you see I don't have piloting, so therefore there was a danger, and my my commandos and so my commandos and my officer got injured. Yeah, so it's uh, looking pretty bad. But I'm collecting some resources. Normally, I wouldn't have done this one, but for the purpose of getting started. I thought, you know, we'll show you the process of what can happen. And so I don't have piloting. So all I've come away from this so far is with just 27 scrap, which you can see up in the uh, top left-hand corner there. So yeah, I mean, it wouldn't normally I wouldn't have taken it, but oh, we're, get, we're getting a bit more, uh, and we're getting a bit of fuel now. There we go. All right, so you can see it was worth it in the end. I, mean, I lost a lot of commandos, so we're going to have to replace those. But now I have 58 scraps and three more fuel. So I'm doing really, really good on fuel. What it means is I can visit all the solar systems on my trip. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the upgrades. So if we look at the upgrades, uh, we have uh, squadron upgrades, we have subsystems, we have weapons and hull. Squadrons, um, the squadron dock uh, is going probably going to be the last thing that you upgrade simply because it's so expensive compared to everything else. And uh, generally, once you get to the third sector, that's when you start looking at adding more squadron docks. The system support uh, that you have here, and the hull integrity support, and the weapon system support, is it basically allows you to assign more officers. It gives you more officer slots in here. Now, remember, you only get five officers, so you're not necessarily going to want to upgrade those unless you really, really need it. So until you have an officer to fill the slot, don't bother upgrading those. Okay, the ones you really need to focus on are your um, additional hull structures and your additional weapon docks. Uh, those are the two most important ones at this stage, okay? The hull structures, as you'll see in a minute, oh, actually, if you see up here in the top left-hand corner, I've got two hulls, and I can add three more. And by adding more hulls, it obviously makes your ship much more resilient. Now, you have another option here called harden hull, uh, but you don't really want to do that until you've actually added all your hull structures. The reason why is that the hull structures, for 100 credits, you get another 80 hull. For the hardened hull, you spend 80, but you only get an extra 15, because it takes you from 80 to 15, 80 to 95 for each one. So you only get an extra 30 because you have two hulls. So once you get to sort of three or four hulls, then it makes more sense to have a hardened hull. Just be aware that if you lose a hull, you have to go to a shipyard in order to repair it and replace it. Whilst obviously with the hardened hull, it means it gives you more longevity for those hulls. Okay, the heat capacitor is your squadrons and your weapons, if they're taking damage, they will take heat damage. And it reaches a point where they take so much heat damage that they're no longer functional and have need time to repair. And so the heat capacitor allows you to, uh, to give you some offset against that. Okay. Uh, so we've covered fuel scavenging efficiency, so we're definitely going to buy that straight away. So I mentioned that's the most important one. And then we have 48 left. So the navigation scanner allows us to see further into the star map, so we know what's coming ahead. Okay, and um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that back because I really want to, to get the additional hull structures if I can. And then down the bottom here, just mention it very quickly, you've got the ground distress signal efficiency. That gives you more bailouts on your expeditions, but as I said before, once you're committed to a mission, an expedition, you don't really bother coming back out of it. So it's kind of, one of once again, one of the last things that you would upgrade. So we're going to close that. And we're going to go back to our system map. And what we're going to do is we are going to go to uh, the shipyard. Let's go to the shipyard. I'll show you that, and then we'll finish off with the battle. 
There we go. So we've arrived. So we can skip past that. We'll get off the chance to surrender. That's it. All right, if you just hold down the space bar, you can zoom through these. There we go. So we've just got some more. Uh, that's handy just as we arrive at the shipyard. Okay, so we're here at the shipyard. We're going to visit the shop. And as I mentioned in the shipyard, uh, you can always buy Neo fuel and commandos from army depots, uh, <laughs> shipyards, and the other one, which I've forgotten, mercenary house pets. There we go. And then your hull, as you can see, you can repair your hull in the shipyard. You can buy more squadrons. You can repair your drones as well, which is important. And then you have your auxiliary system. So for example, armored hull, emergency retreat thrusters, they're the ones that go up into these little slots here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I really want, I just wanted to show you that, how it works. Um, be aware that if you see something in here called a drone nano, you wanna get those. They are by far one of the most powerful uh, squadrons in the game. And uh, when I do the next video and I cover the combats in more detail, I will, uh, I will go on more about the drones. All right, so we're gonna close because I want my hull. And we're gonna go back to our system map. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to one of these anomalies now. So we're gonna travel there. So I've got seven fuel, so I've still got plenty of fuel. We're gonna fly over there. And we have a battleship. Okay, and it's gonna attack us. So we're gonna accept that. And unfortunately, we've got a disadvantage here in that it's ready to deploy and we're not. But we're going to continue. And what we have now, for all of those that love your strategy games, we've got the wonderful hex grid. Now, at the start of it, it's pause. Now, the re reason why I said it was a semi-real-time strategy game is because it happens in real time, but at any time you can hit the space bar and you can pause. And so you get a chance to think, you get a chance to carry out some maneuvers, and then you start moving again. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a quick little analysis here. So the first thing I've seen is I've not actually assigned my officers. So if I click here, uh, let's see, that one's a battleship one, as you can see from the applies to at the bottom there, it's got the little battleship, the little uh, plate icon. So we want this one, thruster boost. So we're going to apply that officer to there, and then we're going to go up to hull, and we're going to apply Cheng to the hull. So we get our bonuses to the hull. There we go. Right, so we're going to analyze over here. So we've got two hulls for 80. They've got one hull for 100, so they're clearly at a disadvantage. They have two officers, so they get good repair speed, and they, uh, they've got the ability to absorb. Uh, uh, they've got extra shielding as well. So um, they haven't got, they've only got one squadron bay. We've got two, so that's a definite benefit. And then you can see here, they've only got two squadrons. Uh, whilst we have unlimited squadrons. The difference is, is they always have a finite number. We have an unlimited number, but we have a repair time where the, where the uh, squadrons are unavailable. Okay, they've got no weapons on their battleship. Uh, we have one, we have our Pierce Laser Mark I. And then down here, auxiliary systems, uh, all neutral turrets are considered as allied. So the turrets that are here, they're gonna work against us. So we're not gonna want to, we're gonna want to avoid that top left-hand corner. Now, for our squadrons, we've got our fighters, we've got our drones, we have frigates, and we have cruisers. If you click on the little icon here, you can then see what you have available in your dock. So I have the fighter that's deployed here, and we have this drone that's deployed here, and then we have a spare drone Mark I, and we have a spare frigate. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign these a starting point. So they're bringing out a frigate, and you can see it does massive damage versus fighters. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to dock that. And the way you dock a uh, squadron is you right click it and it will dock. And that's the same if it's on grid. And we're just going to put in a drone instead. And I'm going to click on my drone and I'm going to pop in, let's say, right next to my battleship right here. And I'm going to click on that one. And now we're ready to go. So I hit the space bar. And as you can see, they've already deployed. You can see my weapon is charging. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause quickly and I'm going to move my uh, drones into the asteroid field. The reason why I want to do that is because the asteroid field actually protects you. So until the asteroid field is, is destroyed, um, you are basically protected. So we're going to move that up to there, and hopefully they're going to come close enough that we can attack from the asteroid field. We may even have enough time to move that one into here uh, as these uh, frigates move quite slowly. So let's have a look. Yeah, there we go. So we've paused that in there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that round to there, and then hopefully we can catch them in a pincer movement, and we're protected by the asteroids. So there we go. They started attacking. 
And there we go, I'm attacking from both sides. I'm protected by the asteroid belt, and boom. So now they've got 13 seconds before they can uh, deploy another squadron. So I'm going to leave these here. I'm going to check my health. That's green. Okay, now patched. I'm going to cover patched very quickly. What patched means is that when your squadron dies uh, in battle and it gets repaired, it only gets repaired up to 50% of its capability. To get it repaired to 100%, you need to go to a shipyard and repair them there. So they will only ever come back out again at 50%. So just something to be aware of. Okay, now my weapon's ready to fire. The way you fire your weapon is you click on it, and then you can either select a hex to actually fire on squadrons, or you can actually go for one of these hexes up here. So this would affect the weapons, this would affect the squadrons, and this affects the hull. So what we're going to do is we're going to attack the squadron, uh, because if I do enough damage, it's going to stop their squadron from uh, launching. So there we go, it's shot, and you can see I've done 50% heat damage to it. So as I've got two uh, sets of drones, I'm going to wait and see what they're going to release next. And they're going to bring out a fighter. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to pull back these drones. They're going to send them home. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring out fighters to fight the fighters or frigate. And then what we'll do is we'll send the drones around the back when the fighter's engaged down here. So what we're going to do is we'll pull these... We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll pull these down to there. There we go. Okay, and we're going to let them launch the fighters. Okay, and we're going to bring out our own fighters. And actually, no, we're going to bring out frigate. And we're just going to pop it right there so it should be in a, a place to intercept. There we go. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to move the drones. We're going to move the drones so they don't engage. So what you can do is you can control click and do multiple trips. So rather than going around this way, where we're going to be hit by the um, by the towers, we're going to go down here. So I'm going to click here and do control click, and then I'm going to control click up to there. And so what's going to happen now is my fighters are going to go wandering off. And there we go. So my drones are flying off. Whilst my frigates are taken care. Oh, my gun's ready to fire. So I'm going to fire that here as well. Actually, I'm going to go straight for the hull. So that's because there's no, they've got no squadrons left, so they are now defenseless. So I'm just going to shoot straight at the hull. And once my uh, drones arrive, I'm going to click on those and click on the hull to make sure it focuses on the hull. And now they're just going to take damage and there's absolutely nothing they can do. I and mean, if I want to, I can even move my frigates up there. Although there's a good chance that the uh, battleship will have died by the time I get there. Anyway, that gives you a basic idea then of uh, how everything works, hopefully. So we're just going to win this battle now. There we go. So that's going to complete. And then generally, once you finish a uh, battle, you get a reward, uh, which is most generally scrap. So that's good. And then what we can do is we can do an upgrade, and I can upgrade my hull structures. And I've still got 53, so that's good. And then what I would do is I would then maybe do the next two um, next two systems as I have plenty of fuel and then I'll look at my star map and go right next I want to go to I would go to Tau Edisim as it has a battleship wreckage so as we know the expeditions uh, give us good good revenue and it has an army depot uh, where I can stock up and hopefully buy some new weapons from all the scrap that I obtained from the battleship wreckage so there you go so that's kind of crying suns that's hopefully got you started I've shown all the various mechanics uh, enjoy the game, it's a really good story. Like I said, be aware of this, this saving mechanic, which is a bit of a pain. But for a Kickstarter game, I think it is excellent. Uh, really good storyline. And uh, yeah, it's well put together. So there we go. Uh, please leave comments, uh, let me know what you think. If you think I missed something out, then uh, please let me know. Uh, do your likes and dislikes. And if you enjoy my content, then please do subscribe and hit the bell icon and uh, you'll get notifications when I'm releasing new videos. All right, thank you very much, and until next time, bye.